I guess it's time for benchmark of the Zero series. Hey guys, it's fair to say that we are all surprised with the latest release of the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, which is coincidentally this board. Why surprised? Well, it's been a lot of talk online about component shortages and Raspberry Pi 4 got a price hike uh, due to that fact. So bringing a new board to the rooster of Raspberry Pi devices, well, it wasn't exactly on my newsfeed list. But the board is here and I have all the Zero boards as well, the original Zero and the Zero W, which is wirelessly connected version of the Zero. So which brings me to this video. Let's run some benchmarks and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of having the latest board. First, let's start with some dry specification. The latest Raspberry Pi basically doesn't really change inside that much apart from the, well, CPU. Now we have Cortex-A53, which is a quad-core processing. And if you remember, the previous generations only featured a single core. But all of the cores, the old ones and the new ones, are clocked at 1 GHz. So it's gonna uh, lead to some interesting benchmarks. And I'm going to split this video in a couple of sections. What we're going to test? Well, we're gonna look at, obviously, the benchmark of the CPU and see how fast it goes, but we're also going to test a single core performance as well. We're going to look into the temperatures and see how hot it gets uh, during the stress. We're going to look at the power consumption and lastly we're going to look at internet connectivity including Ethernet connection over USB because there should be some interesting findings there. Since the CPU is the biggest change it's only fair that we're going to start with the CPU speed. And for that I've used 7-zip to demonstrate how quickly we can use 7-zip to actually perform some operations, whether it's a single core performance or it's a, whether it's a multi-threaded performance. And that should give us an indication of the new board performance. And it's fair to say that we're not going to see unexpected results. So let's start with Raspberry Pi Zero. Running BCM2835 CPU, obviously it's a single core processor, so multi-threading was out of the question. However, using 7-zip uh, benchmark, I was able to complete a single core benchmark with a result of 434 MIPS. Moving to a slightly newer version, the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero W, with the same BCM2835 processor, I was able to achieve a very similar result, no surprises there, and that was 440 MIPS. And then I decided to test single core performance of the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, which uses Cortex-A53. Now, my reasoning here being that if we're going to test a single core performance, that core is not going to be affected by running operated operating system, like in a case of a Zero in Zero W. And that's proven correct with a score of 882, which is doubling what you would expect on the previous zero iterations. And it shows you how busy is that single core just to run the operating system on the single core devices. And moving to multi-threaded performance, I was able to achieve 3010 MIPS using the same benchmark for multi-threaded devices, and which shows that, well, actually Raspberry Pi 02W is definitely five times quicker. In this benchmark, it's seven times quicker. Well done. But with increased power comes increased well, temperature. And that was the next thing that I've looked at. I completely forgot how temperature efficient were the old generation boards. Now, running my benchmark in 70 degrees centigrade, I've discovered that all of the Raspberry Pi A0 series, including the latest one, were running around 30 degrees when idle. However, if you crank up things a little bit, and by little bit, I mean if you start loading processing cores to 100%, then situation changes. Now Raspberry Pi Zero and Raspberry Pi Zero W were basically performing at 36 to 37 degrees, which is, well, not much of a change. However, stressing all four cores of Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, well, that paints a different picture. The temperature of the Raspberry Pi reached as high as 67 degrees. However, in a board's defense, I was not able to thermally throttle it. Even running the test for 15 minutes resulted in the actual temperature settling down around 67 degrees. 
This performance opens up possibility to actually overclock the board to probably 1.2 or 1.3 GHz without using very aggressive active cooling solutions. So this is something if you want to explore then go ahead, there is a room in there temperature wise. The next step was to figure out how much power I need to supply to get this board going. So I hooked it up to my MDPXP uh, Miniware power station, by the way I reviewed it in here, and observed the current consumption. At idle, Raspberry Pi 0 and Raspberry Pi 0 W would draw around 70 to 120 milliamps. That would change if you wanted to connect Raspberry Pi 0 to Ethernet using an adapter, and that would introduce another 100 milliamps to a total current consumption, and it would remain true for each board. And running these boards at 100% CPU use would increase the power consumption from around 150 milliamps uh, without the USB adapter to around 290 to 300 milliamps with a USB adapter connected for both boards. But when it comes to Pi 02W, the situation has changed slightly. The board would draw slightly more, uh, ranging between uh, 90 milliamps to 130 milliamps. However, during benchmarks, the board would ask for almost half a amp of a current in order to function properly. It means that the board is much closer to Raspberry Pi 4 than it is to Raspberry Pi Zero series in terms of power consumption. The last improvement of uh, Pi Zero 2W is redesigned around the Wi-Fi element. We've got additional shielding and some work has been done around the antenna to make sure you've got the best Wi-Fi signal possible. Unfortunately, it is still 2.4 GHz bandwidth with 5 GHz nowhere to be seen, so we are stuck with that. In terms of performance, how does it look like? Obviously, I wasn't able to run the benchmarks on the original Zero because it comes without wireless connectivity, but I was able to run the IPERF3 benchmarks against the Raspberry Pi Zero W and Zero Two W. So I've placed both boards in ideal positions around two meters from the rotor and in a direct line of sight, then used IPERF to run the test in a client and server configurations. For Raspberry Pi Zero W, the results were around 6 to 8 megabits per second slower than on Raspberry Pi Zero 2, so you can definitely see some improvements there. The speeds aren't very fast, but it's a definitely a step in the right direction. But that got me thinking, since we've got a new processor, it would make sense to actually test Ethernet over the USB, because it is bound to CPU as well. The results for Raspberry Pi Zero and Raspberry Pi Zero W using USB Ethernet adapter were quite similar. Now in the client configurations I would be getting 82 megabits per second and in the server configurations I would get speeds up to 170 to 80 megabits per second. Quite impressive in that configuration. However, once I've connected Raspberry Pi 02W, now that's another story. The speed increased significantly in a client configuration, which means all extra processing was used to perform all the, well, internet operations as well, and I've achieved the speeds of in excess of 220 megabits per second, which is basically three times performance boost. So if you want to use this board and take advantage of the higher internet speeds, you best invest in a USB to Ethernet adapter and connect it that way to achieve the biggest speeds. The Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, it's actually a pretty decent board. It fills the um, gap between the Zero series being not powerful enough for a lot of projects, while Raspberry Pi 4 fully featured board being mostly too powerful for projects that require Raspberry Pi to do one thing. Now, this board costs around £13 in UK, and it has enough juice to run a lot of different projects while providing you with that small form factor and affordability, which you can take advantage of. Now there is a couple of things that I would personally improve. I'd love to see the 5 GHz Wi-Fi on it, so it would connect even better with existing routers in different bands. Another improvement that would be another improvement that I would welcome would be inclusion of actually USB Type C ports, because since we moved to those on Raspberry Pi 4, why not to have it on Raspberry Pi Zero 2? Well, maybe on the next iteration.
So since we already established that this is a pretty decent board and it outperforms the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero series older boards, then we need to find a use for it. And the first thing that comes to my mind is to try to use it as an Octoprint server, something that a lot of you probably want to see it. As having a board this size and this price as Octoprint server is probably ideal. But that I gotta leave for the next video. So, as you know, I do not have a posting schedule if you're interested and want to find out how this board performs as Octoprint server or follow my other wacky projects and you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain you that. But I have a social media, YouTube likes to filter out the comments, so if you want to leave me a link to something interesting that I should take a look at or just start a conversation, hit me up and follow me on there. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll definitely see you next video. Take care. Bye.